In this video we will discuss some of the important things to consider while designing a fuselage. The principles mentioned in the video can be applied to all kinds of aircraft. Let's get started. Inside-out design. The fuselage provides a streamlined fairing for the payload. In subsonic aircraft, usually the payload drives the design. In other words, the design is made from the inside out. For example, many UAVs have a whale-shaped fuselage because the fuselage has to cover a parabolic antenna in the nose section. This inside-out design philosophy can be applied to any aircraft. For example, the number of seats and the spacing between seats, and the number of aisles and decks, as well as baggage space essentially decides the fuselage length and cross-sections of a passenger plane. In case of general aviation planes, the 95th percentile man is generally used as a standard reference to size the cockpit and cabin. The possibilities of seating are tandem seats and side-by-side -side seats. A unique arrangement is the staggered seating, in which one seat is slightly behind the other so that the shoulders of the two people overlap. Some special cases of inside-out design can be seen here. We will go through a step-by-step -step fuselage design process later in this video. Finest Ratio it is the ratio of the fuselage length and its maximum diameter. Many books, including Horner's Fluid Dynamic Drag point out that the lowest drag occurs at a finest ratio of around 3. However, most airplanes have much higher values of this ratio, around 6 to 8. The best finest ratio is around 3 if the design needs to have a large cross-sectional area and is not restricted by internal volume. In other words, if the fuselage length can be made as short as needed. An example of this is the Quest Air Venture. However, there is an issue with a low fineness ratio of 3. The tail moment arm is small, and therefore, larger tail surfaces are needed for the required tail volume coefficients. This leads to increased wetted area, which increases drag. An alternative to this is adding a tail boom to a low fineness ratio fuselage pod in order to increase the tail moment arm without increasing the wetted area a lot. This can be seen on many UAVs and gliders. For an aircraft where the internal components can be rearranged and the cross-section diameter can be reduced as needed, the optimum fineness ratio for subsonic aircraft is somewhere between 6 and 8. Supersonic designs will have a fineness ratio of 10 to 15 or more. Concorde had a fineness ratio of 16.7. Before we proceed to the three standard types of fuselage, we need to consider some of the important functions of the fuselage. This is really important to note as fuselage design affects a lot of other areas such as drag, internal volume, tail moment arm, visibility, power plant installation, aesthetics, and so on. If not done properly, the fuselage design can lead to problems later on in the design process. A good fuselage layout in the conceptual stage goes through the later design stages without major modifications, things fit. The drag is low, and the structure is lightweight. The fuselage is not just a dust cover for the payload. It has many different functions, such as being an aerodynamic fairing for protection, a mount for lifting surfaces, engines, and landing gear, a beam that provides the necessary moment arm for the tail surfaces, and a space to accommodate pushrods, cables, and wiring. Now, let's look at the three types of fuselages and their pros and cons. Frustum fuselage. It is a tapered box-like fuselage which resembles a trapezoidal prism. In geometric terms, a frustum is the portion of a solid, such as a cone or pyramid, that lies between two parallel planes cutting the solid, resulting in a truncated, tapered shape. This type is relatively simple to make and is inexpensive. Its drawback is that it generates far more drag as compared to a tadpole fuselage. If internal volume is a concern, or an inexpensive but strong fuselage is required, then it is the right choice. Pressure Tube Fuselage it has a tubular main section, with capped ends. Pressurized or not, this fuselage shape is ideal for passenger aircraft of any size because of its constant cross-section providing space for seating. For an aircraft without a pressure cabin, a rectangular cross-section is cheaper to produce. If the airplane is pressurized, the cross-section is circular, because it allows for even distribution of internal pressure loads, making it structurally efficient and resulting in lower weight for a given strength compared to other shapes. This design reduces the production costs as same frames are used. It also makes it possible to construct aircraft variants with a lengthened or shortened fuselage. In order to accommodate a specific number of passengers, the fuselage can be long and narrow or, conversely, short and wide. As the fuselage contributes approximately 25% to 50% of an aircraft's total drag, it is especially important to ensure that it has a low drag shape. 
This is where the fineness ratio comes into play. In the subsonic range, a fineness ratio of 6 is said to have the lowest tube drag. As discussed earlier, a shorter fuselage also means a smaller tail moment arm and hence larger tail surfaces which increase drag. Therefore, a fineness ratio of 8 is common for such fuselages. In case of supersonic designs, the fineness ratio is around 10 to 15. Given the number of passengers, seating arrangement such as distance between seats and number of aisles and decks, and the size of the baggage compartment, the length and cross-section of the center section can be determined. The forward section typically ranges from 1.45 to 1.75 times the diameter of the fuselage. The length of the empennage ranges from 3 to 3.35 times the diameter for most airplanes. This fineness ratio has the least drag. Tadpole Fuselage it is more expensive to build due to the compound surfaces, but comparatively economical if composites are used for construction. All modern sailplanes as well as some general aviation planes use this type of fuselage because of its low drag characteristics. It has much less drag compared to a frustum fuselage because of two main reasons. First, the forward section is shaped in such a way as to sustain a laminar boundary layer. Secondly, as the empennage is contracted, it has lesser wetted area which leads to lesser skin friction drag. Another design consideration is the slight downward tilt of the nose section. Due to the upwash ahead of the wing, the front fuselage sees a higher angle of attack, which increases its drag. To decrease this angle of attack, the nose section has a downward tilt, which results in lower drag. Now, we will look at a simplified design process to design a fuselage. First, determine the geometry of the wing and horizontal and vertical tails. This gives us the relative placement of the wing and tails to get the tail moment arm for sufficient stability and control. For wing design, you can watch the previous video for more information. For tail design, we can use the tail volume coefficient method. Next, indicate the desired CG position and CG envelope on the centerline. This is based on the desired static margin. Then, estimate the weight of all known components making up the airplane and place the components in such a way as to get the favorable CG position of the previous step. Once the CG is in a satisfactory location, indicate the dimensions of the components on the diagram. Now, trace a basic fuselage that encloses all the internal components, keeping in mind aerodynamics and aesthetics. This gives us the basic fuselage shape that can now be refined. Some design suggestions for this are as follows. The fuselage should be as streamlined as possible. Do not start the tapering of the fuselage until past the trailing edge of the wing. If the wing and fuselage both taper at the same time, the air will be more likely to separate, increasing drag. The tail upsweep angle is very important during takeoff and flare landing. The fuselage should allow the airplane to rotate to an angle close to that of the angle of attack of its maximum lift coefficient. We should keep in mind the load paths of the mounted components such as wing, tails, and landing gear. Maintenance should be simple, allowing the replacement of avionics, batteries, control linkages, and so on. For propeller aircraft, there should be adequate prop clearance at the nose of the aircraft. Jet engines buried in the fuselage will impact the fuselage geometry, as well as the inlet and exhaust paths. Pilot visibility is also crucial. Consider the requirements of the overnose and overside angles. In case of transonic and supersonic aircraft, consider applying the area rule to the fuselage, as discussed in a previous video. If you found the video informative, support the channel via the link in the description. You can watch these videos next for more on the area rule and wing design. Thank you for watching.